everybody who was involved in the in the murder of Ahmad Arbery, they're convicted. Thank God, man. Right? Thank and God. Absolutely. If this case specifically, if they walked away scratch free, yeah, hell oh, would man. ensue. Oh yeah. yeah. There's, I mean, because again, there was video evidence, right? This was really hard to watch, man. Imagine so, if there wasn't video evidence. Oh, yeah. You'd see the same right, shit. Right, Where was this located at? Oh, oh shit. Fuck. I don't know, man. I can't remember. Yeah. but well, Atlanta, I, Atlanta. It was in yeah. Atlanta. So Ahmad Arbery is jogging around. In five, four, three, two, one. What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of the Yinus Brain Podcast. <laughs> <laughs> The Yinos, like, we go with this one. Hey, hey. Shana. Happy birthday. Because you know those J's are silent. Yeah. You know? <laughs> those G's are silent too. No, like, bro, when, when uh, I first heard Doyers, I was so confused, man. Yeah. I was like, Doyers? What, what are you talking about? That's oh that's how the, uh, the Mexican fam here in LA say Dodgers. Yeah. But did you see, uh, so they do Latino night mm -hmm. at uh, the Dodger Stadium. Mm-hmm. And the teams wear like Spanish names. It right? says Doyers. No, <laughs> no, that was a problem. It says Lost Dodgers. Uh -oh. And all the fans were like, fuck that. I don't want to buy that. I want to buy Doyers. <laughs> <laughs> so nobody bought those jerseys. That's hella funny, dude. <laughs> That's so fucking funny, man. We, um, I mean, people did bring this up, which I thought was very interesting. <laughs> was Sesame Street has a Korean character now. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And they like, you know, try to make her seem just like a normal type of girl, you know? I didn't know. I, you know, I never really thought about it, but I didn't realize Sesame Street had races because people are orange and yellow. Yeah. They're like little monsters. Right? Yeah. yeah. So they, they had brought on a black uh, Muppet kid, I believe, oh. a Latino Muppet kid. And now this is the first Asian. Yeah. Thing. yeah. Uh, well, they it's should... like the Simpsons, right? Like technically based on their skin color, they should They're be Asian. Asian. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but they, I guess, are white. Yeah. <laughs> Me stop Spock Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's one of my favorite but episodes. Yeah. The funny thing this about- the, <laughs> the funny thing about Asians on Simpsons though, yeah. back in the day, you know, yeah. they had different colors. Yeah. The Asians were white. Yeah, I know. Oh, that's <laughs> right. Yeah, like- That sushi chef. Yeah, yeah, the and sushi Bart's stuff. Karate teacher, the yeah. Yakuza, yeah. you know, <laughs> forgiven his breeze. Yeah, they're pale as fuck. <laughs> I wonder why I looked at that as a kid and I didn't find that but racist. Here's here's the question. I though. don't still find it racist. What is Doctor no. Nick? Because Doctor Nick looks Asian. But his accent is not. Hi, everybody. Yeah, like, what is that? Is, is, what is he? Is, he's is, just is that some like an Eastern of, European type of shit? I think so. I think it's supposed to be ambiguous. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. 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 yeah but his last name's Riviera. Oh, yeah. yeah. So it yeah, might be it's South all, American. It's confusing, man. I don't no, get it. Dude, you know, if you go back and watch the first season. Oh, bro. The animation style is so different. But Smithers is black. Wait, what? Really? He yeah, <laughs> he was black. Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> no, with yeah. Smithers? Dude, yeah. I, I could have sworn I saw the entirety of the first it episode. It wasn't just Carl. <laughs> wow. Carl was tight. Yeah. Smithers was colorized in his first appearance as a black dude with blue hair. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Matt that's Groening crazy, in an bro. interview with TMZ said that this was a mistake, but the producers didn't have enough money to correct it. <laughs> in many ways, Smithers represents the stereotype of a closeted gay man. Wow. Yeah. That's crazy. I didn't know that. I yeah. didn't know that. Smithers is gay. I think Lenny and Carl got together too, finally. Wow. <laughs> oh, in the show? Yeah, I believe so. Get the fuck out of here. That's crazy. Yeah. But you know what? It's been so long ago that I saw the first episode. I'm probably just not remember. I Nobody just remember, watches that first season, yeah, man. <laughs> the, the drawing style was like just yeah. horrid. I'm like, oh yeah. my goodness. But yeah, I mean, I, I got a fucking DM like, I posted about the Korean Muppet. Yeah, mm -hmm. I mean that's I'm, that's pretty cool. And then, but someone said like, "Oh, you know, race baiting something that has nothing to do with race in the first place." I'm like, "Hey, man, like, <laughs> come on, yeah, that's <laughs> just, not where I'm going. Come on, with this, man. <laughs> it's a Muppet. It's just seven years old. Leave her alone." Yeah. <laughs> she also she has a Korean ass name too. Yeah. Chi Chi Young. You know yeah. what? So Which funny? means sesame, apparently, right? Oh, it does. Chi Young is sesame. Well, she's like, yeah, my name in Korean means sesame. Oh, like, why didn't oh, it was so funny when I was um. I forgot who posted this, but they were talking about how in the episode she was breaking down how Korean people give uh, names and like mm. the meaning of her name, mm, right? Yeah. Like what Chi means and Young means. And she goes in Korean, something, something, something. And when you do it this way, that way. And I was listening to it. I'm like, she ain't no Korean person like that. <laughs> <laughs> There's not a single Korean American that knows what the fuck she's talking yeah. about. My right. parents would not have told me that. Yeah, exactly. They don't tell me if, what it means. Because because of the show, there's some people wrote to me in my DMs. They're like, oh, what's your Korean? I want to know what the meaning is. And I'm like, <laughs> 
the fuck are you talking about? I don't know. I don't fucking know. I don't know the meaning of my shit. Yeah, what's your name fuck mean, Peter? Yeah. You know? Ask a fob. I don't, yeah. I don't even think fobs would know, really, man. Yeah. Oh, no, yeah. no. I'm pretty yeah. sure fobs in Korea don't know this yeah. shit. They're like, my name has a meaning? Yeah, it's but like you know they're trying to be super politically correct with yeah, this. Yeah, let's shit. not do that. Yeah. yeah, you don't have to go that far. It's like, what's your name, Chiyun? My parents gave me that name, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Sesame Street, motherfucker. What does it mean? I don't know what the fuck it means. It's just my name that yeah. they gave to me. Yeah, Asian boys for life. <laughs> 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 she starts gangbanging oh and shit. My God. That'd be fucking yeah, tight. You want to talk oh about breaking God. stereotypes? Let's do it. A yeah. gang gangbanging yeah. Korean girl. So this on is what Sesame she says. Street. So in Korean, traditionally, the two syllables they each mean something different. And chi means like smart or wise, and young means like brave or courageous and strong. I'm like, shit, I didn't know I that. I didn't know that. <laughs> I had no fucking I idea. I don't know what the fuck my name means, that's for sure. But we were looking it up, and guess what? Chi also means sesame. <laughs> she <laughs> also means rat. rat. <laughs> <laughs> you fucking rat. You cheese <laughs> kid. Yeah, they're saying, you know what the funny thing is when you, you know, obviously Twitter always, you know, tries to put somebody on blast which there was like uh, people in politics talking about uh, how this is like an abomination to america like it's becoming too racial and it's like it's fucking sesame street bro yeah, yeah. They, they they have you know like you said the the black uh the the black american muppet the mexican american muppet why can't we have an asian american they have muppet? An hiv muppet Get the fuck out they of here muppet with, that's hiv positive wow <laughs> that's hilarious yeah. wow. aren't they supposed to be kids yeah, so like, like <laughs> that's pretty how terrible. How the fuck you get that? Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's that's pretty terrible. But I, man. No, but I mean, the point being though, like they reach out through these Muppets, and then these Muppets, according to whatever ethnicity or whatever it's going through, yeah. like they have an autistic Muppet. Too. Okay, okay. And so they teach how yeah you know, she I, works or right. whatever, and like um, for you know one kid, my parents get divorced, da, da, da. but then they'll do like race centric something they're going through mm. in this world that oh. needs to be explained. Okay, at the time. okay. So I think they're saying like, in light of all the stop Asian hate and all that stuff, yeah. I think they probably want to bring up some storyline like where her mom gets assaulted or some yeah. shit. Yeah, that's uh, my that's my theory. <laughs> so I see. So the 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 HIV one is a kid with. Um, so the it's called her name or him is Kami. Kami is a character on uh, Takalani Sesame and Sesame Square, the respective South African and Nigerian uh. versions of the children's television program, Sesame Street. Mm. So it is, it's representative of the issues that's happening within the country. Yeah. And so yeah. like you said, with the whole stop Asian hate thing, they thought it'd be smart to bring on an Asian character, which is dope. I, I fuck with that. No, for sure, for sure. I mean, the whole point of it is to educate, right? Yeah. It's just to educate people on things that maybe they're not aware of, or, you know, just be, let it know, let it be known that there's differences between other people i wonder cultures. why they chose a korean girl instead of a chinese Shit. kid i don't know i don't know right? i don't know maybe is, is sesame straight allowed in china maybe they're like we don't it's oh, not yeah. maybe probably, maybe, huh? probably not maybe it's probably banned. not yeah. probably not so like I mean I could I could see how it's gonna help Korean kids because not like my parents explained shit to me growing up. One hundred percent. You get more educated through TV <laughs> yeah. than, you, than through your parents. It's like, man, what's stop Asian? Hey, I don't know. Not happening to me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, but you know what? Sesame Street. It's forever tainted in my head with Dave Chappelle's version of it. Remember yeah. from the oh, show? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what oh, I distinctly God. remember yeah. in that is basically their version of the Grouch. That Charlie Murphy voices. Yeah. And he has this song is I don't understand. I make love to my hand. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, oh my oh gosh. Man. You know what? Like, I was watching Chappelle's show. Yeah. And my harmony was was uh staying at her house. Uh-huh. And uh, so that parody of Sesame Street came out. My harmony thought it was Sesame <laughs> Street, right? That's Hell and funny. then that Muppet pulls his pants down and his dick comes out, right? Yeah, the yeah. disease. Yeah. My husband started cracking the fuck up. <laughs> she was like, ah, I, I try to change the channel. Yeah. She's like, no, go back. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that the one that where he has like warts on his penis? Yeah, because he's, and then he's talking about like, venereal diseases. Yeah, and the Muppet like yaks. Yeah, dude. Oh my God. That's my husband loved watching wrestling. Funny. and I like beat my dick <laughs> like it owes me money. money. <laughs> That's where I got that line yeah. from, dude. My husband loved cops, dude. Cops. And she didn't even know the name of the show. It was just called Cops. She just called it Bad Boys. Dude, yeah. it was entertaining, bro. Yeah. I, I I watched it when I was a kid. I don't know why. I just like, this is fun. I just watched it to see somebody escape. 
I'm like, bro, these guys are fast as fuck, yeah. man. Yeah. And let me tell you something. This is some non-racial shit. All the white people got caught, all the black people fucking dusted these motherfuckers. <laughs> Every time I saw one of the black homies there, I'm like, you ain't gonna yeah. catch this fool. This fool fucking gone, bro. So cops got off the air, right? Uh-huh. Um, in light of a, a lot of the racial unrest that was happening. Okay. And they said that it wasn't helping the society. Or mm. whatever. So they took it off. It's like, wow, that's pretty commendable. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's coming back. <laughs> <laughs> so Fox News has a streaming service now, right? Uh, <laughs> so they bought okay. the rights to it. Yeah, okay. they're, of course. They're airing it. Yeah. All, these, all these fucking Korean <laughs> idol are super happy. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, I was awaiting poor days. Yeah. <laughs> I need a cops. I need bad boys now. You know what's hilarious? Cops originated in the neighborhood I grew up in, in Washington. Oh, for real? Really? Lakewood, wow. Washington. It's like the Korea town of That's of crazy. Washington. That's where it originated yeah. from. So yeah. the first episode of Cops. was is, You could see like Lakewood, Washington. Wow. And then subs- they still have a bunch of like, I keep seeing landmarks that actually yeah. right next to my church. Like, yeah. oh, hey, <laughs> like, oh, I know that But spot. to be fair, every episode of Cops, I'm like, where is that in America? <laughs> Like, yeah. It never looks like Sacramento, California, for sure. <laughs> just but the, follow the meth. Yeah. <laughs> the best show, better than cops, is uh, Steven Seagal, dude. Him being a cop. Did you know <laughs> this fool had a fucking show where he was a sheriff. I know. I know. And they I know. He had a few seasons, dude. Man, the, I talked about this on the sad. previous podcast. The funniest episode, the funniest episodes, is him trying to talk to any black person. <laughs> He like what? code switches. Yeah, yeah, he does. Like his, crazy, bro. His code switching. This when I like first saw this, talk. Yeah. I was crying laughing. Yeah. It's like, what you trying to, what you talking all that nonsense for? <laughs> like, oh my God. And it was switched to the camera. And he goes, I'm trying to dress, uh, arrest this gentleman because he's loitering. <laughs> and it's like, what you trying to get my autograph for? I thought you said I was fronting. <laughs> oh, like, no. yo, Steven Seagal, get the fuck out dude, of here, his dude. His level of delusion is out of this world. Like, this guy thinks he's a fucking supreme being, a master of the martial arts. And turns out it's all lies. That's all lies. <laughs> yeah, it's absolutely but all isn't lies. Isn't that why he lives in Russia now? Does he? Oh, <laughs> because he's no still clue. celebrated there. I have no Get clue. Get the fuck out of here, <laughs> they love him and, and this guy, like, when he would do movies, I mean, other actors are on record of saying mm. how, like, rough he was with them. Like, he would actually try to hurt them. Yeah. Just to be like, yeah, that's what it takes. <laughs> what the fuck? I'm not a fighter, bro. I'm an actor, man. Do our buddy who does sound that we all know, uh-huh. he he actually worked on a project that Steven Seagal was a part of. Oh, I would have loved because, to have been a part so of that. So you want to hear the funniest thing? And I, and I, I, I told the story. So if you guys ever heard it, I don't care. So <laughs> there's a lot of people who have it. So he had to do uh, ADR for his own film. Mm-hmm. This is Steven Seagal's own film. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He's starring in it. He wrote it. It stars him. So Steven Seagal is apparently notoriously known for not wanting to do ADR, even in his own fucking film. What's ADR? ADR is basically, so you know uh, when you have audio and you don't catch it really well? Yeah, maybe it's raining Uh or there's a helicopter or Uh you're on a bus Uh or a car. Uh You have to re-record the dialogue. Yes. Or else you're going to get like the AC or whatever noise. Okay, Mm okay. And so he had to do ADR. So they they brought him into the studio to do it. Apparently, he only does one take and that's fucking it. <laughs> <laughs> this is for his own movie. Yeah. So he comes in, super bad attitude, whatever, starts doing it, you know, does it in Steven Seagal fashion, does a fucking terrible job. They're like, hey, Steven, we need to do this again. He goes, I only do one take. <laughs> Leaves. <laughs> this is his film, yeah. by the way. Yeah. This is something that he's hired for. This is out of his own budget. I yeah. think this film is on Netflix. Uh-huh. So <laughs> they decide that the only option that they have is to get... Um, a, uh, voice it, impersonated? a voice impersonator to come in to impersonate <laughs> Steven Seagal for the ADR stuff, right? Dude. Oh man! The oh, guy God. comes in and fucking kills it. Uh-huh. So I guess the person who was uh, dealing with the, with the ADR stuff wasn't the director. It was <laughs> I, I, it was probably the assistant director or whatever, right? He comes in and listens to it over again. He yeah. goes, "You need to fucking trash this." Uh-huh. And they say, "Why?" He goes, "Because this person speaks way too clear. Uh-huh. Like <laughs> they need to mumble their words. This, this job is too good." <laughs> so what? they so they had the impersonator come in and then fuck up the lines yeah. and, and start mumbling yeah and they use that instead of the original one. wow man because <laughs> it's just it was too good dude what? the voice impersonator was completely going on a limb and guessing but just how ridiculous he is yeah. i was like it wouldn't make sense 
that they would hire a voice impersonator to do that shit. He's hilarious, man. The way he talks about himself specifically with MMA fighters. Yeah. He takes credit for all these Dude, wins. he said he takes credit for Anderson Silva. The front kick. The front, the front kick. kick. He oh said he my God. Him that. Which is hilarious because he's an Aikido master. They don't even yeah. have a fucking front <laughs> kick, dude. It's like, so for people who don't know, like in Aikido, is actually a legitimate martial arts, right? right? Depending, but the martial art was created to disarm people with swords. Right. That's why you see a lot of wrist grabs, wrist locks, yeah. flips, and tosses. Grabbing. So it was, it was made to disarm somebody who has a weapon and you don't have a weapon. And that was the purpose of Aikido. And he is actually a legit Aikido master. And I think he's one of the, uh, he was the first American to be able to open up an Aikido dojo in the States. Right. So he's legit in that sense. The fucking front kick shit, bullshit. <laughs> and you know, like, Anderson Silva is super respectful. Yeah, so yeah, you know, he's, yeah. he's kind of going, he's like, there's an interview with him talking about, listen, um, I don't I, I don't want my children to fight. I, I don't know who I want to win. They're both my kids. They're both my sons. Oh my God. <laughs> like, Get the fuck out of here, yeah, guy. This guy is, he's, he's a cuckoo in the head, man. He's a giant too. He's like 6'5". Yeah, I know. I <laughs> yeah, know. But, but have you seen him run? <laughs> oh. <laughs> that's, that's, that's so funny, They're just man. YouTube. Like, Steven Seagal running. Seagal running. Yeah, yeah, the way he flails his arms, bro. Oh my goodness. He's so fucking hilarious. Dude. Yeah. He's literally one of the most like ridiculous. Well, hilarious to us, but he doesn't find himself hilarious. No. He takes himself so seriously. Oh, and he's such a dirtbag. Yeah, yeah, dude. Yeah. There's like so much shit going on. Like, like I, we were, I was saying this earlier because I'm, I'm making this podcast once a week uh, next year, but there's so much shit. What in the heck this podcast is brought to you by Purple, my friends. It's so damn funny. There are all these gimmicks that promise a great night's sleep. And I don't care what kind of toppers there are or how heavy a blanket may be. It's lipstick on a freaking ugly pig. If you're sleeping on a terrible mattress, your sleep will be terrible. It's that simple. I don't think any of you understand how much time we spend sleeping. And if we're going to spend our whole lives sleeping, you might as well do it in pleasure and comfort. Sometimes I would trade my own fiance for my purple mattress. Ariel, if you're listening to this, I'm sorry, but the way that this mattress comforts me and then fills all my nooks and crannies, pause, never mind, let's move on. The, the Gel Flex Grid is amazingly supportive for your back and legs while cushioning your shoulders, necks, and hips, no matter how you sleep, my friends. Purple is amazing, and I don't sleep without it. And you're sleeping without your purple? Well, my friends, don't know how you're doing it because you're not getting the sleep that I am. Getting a great night's sleep starts with having a great mattress. Get a purple mattress. Go to purple.com slash brain10 and use code brain10 for a limited time. You can get 10% off any order of $200 or more. That's purple.com slash brain10, code brain10 for 10% off any order of $200 or more. Purple.com slash brain10 promo code brain10 to talk about yeah, because man. of what's happening in this world. Is, yeah. It's so fucking nuts. Like we just mentioned this. I don't know what there's if we have much to say about this, but there was a clip of this girl who was a front woman in a band that literally <laughs> pissed, <laughs> pissed in this dude's mouth. I don't even know what the context for this is, man. It was at a rock show. Yeah. She's one of the front women. Yeah. And by the way, when when, I, when this clip was sent to me, and of course, Khalif sent it to me. Yeah. <laughs> Khalif sends me this clip. I don't know what I'm looking at. You see this guy being brought up on stage, larger fellow, yeah. and he's laying down, yeah. and the girl's doing her shit on the mic, and you see her standing over him, and I'm like, oh, she's... The, the thing that I thought was going to happen was that she was going to allow the guy to eat her out. Mm. I'm like, damn, this is already fucking crazy. Yeah. But she bends over, squats, and starts pissing in this dude's mouth. Okay, was he given instruction to lay down or he just oh, got up and laid by down? By the way, when yeah. he was laying down, yeah. he loved it. Oh my. He had his he mouth. It was he gonna happen. opened up his mouth yeah. and he went, ah, like oh. that. Because he enjoyed okay. getting his mouth Pissed it. The, 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 uh, <laughs> my my question is: Was this requested by him, <laughs> or was this Maybe. offered by the the front singer? By the way, when I say piss, yeah, I'm not talking about a stream. Yeah, I'm talking about there You're was the a waterfall. levee. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and she probably held in her piss for a solid six weeks. Oh my god! And just the amount yeah. of liquid that came out of her yeah. was insane. Wow, he obliterated. He got obliterated, huh? He got. Mo, it was a tsunami. The the dam was broken. Good God. The levee was broken, dude, yeah. and fucking unloaded on him. And I'm just thinking, like, dude, it, is this how shows are nowadays? But but look look, to be fair, there are people with piss fetishes, you know. <laughs> so, <laughs> maybe he that's exactly what he wanted, and he got his wildest dream fulfilled. It just happened 
in a public forum. Apparently, she made a public apology, but in my opinion, you have nothing to apologize for. It's like everybody knows your band's name now. Yeah. yeah well, except right. for us. Also, if he, yeah, if, I still don't know who they. If he liked it, yeah. What you apologizing for? Yeah. <laughs> You made Dude. his day. Yeah. I thought there were laws against that. I was also saying like, damn, we thought like someone like Marilyn Manson would have done that shit. Yeah, you know? I mean, but what the fuck? Public urination is technically illegal, right? Or is that different in, in certain parts of the, the country? I feel like anything goes at a fucking show, dude. <laughs> Would that be yeah. considered public though or private? It is public, right? It is Pu public, right? A lot of a lot of rock stars got in trouble for public indecency so, for the shit they do on stage. Yeah, right. So I mean, I don't understand what that would fall under. I, I guess we just live in a new age, man. Yeah, man. This is it. This is That's, the future. It's, you can pee on somebody on camera, yeah. and it's all cool now. I feel like you. R. Be... Kelly is is not guilty. <laughs> oh my like, god. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about, man. That's what I've been about. He's in jail right now. He goes, like, oh, so it's okay oh, for her to do it. That's why privilege. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, well, R. Kelly, he was a really old man. Oh, okay. Yeah. And he was a minor. Age, not a minor, yeah. you yeah. fucking sick fuck. Yeah, against their will. Or <laughs> it's really the craziest thing, man. Uh, you know, especially because every time I hear the concert thing, so we, you know, we covered a little bit of the the thing that happened in uh, Astro World with Travis Scott. Uh. Which was Dear fucking God. crazy, man. Yeah. Oh, you guys talked about that one. Oh, we talked okay. about it. I mean, okay. but um, we could talk about it. I didn't talk about it in great detail, though, because yeah. I didn't know anything that happened. I know yet. a little side story about it that I saw. There was a... So I follow uh, Fight Porn on Reddit. It's okay. a subreddit of just street fights, right? At that same Astro World, mm -hmm. World uh, concert, mm -hmm. uh, there's this clip where uh, there's this long, like, lanky white dude with a cup of beer or some shit, right? And there's a group of Asian kids, right, uh, at the back of this. And there's just like this open pit. And um, he's talking shit to them. And then they're just like, whatever, like ignoring him. So he throws his drink in the air and it lands on them, right? And so these Asian kids turn around and one of them goes like, all right, that's it. And then his friend's helping him take off his Gages fuckboy or, earrings yeah. and shit. And then this dude takes off his baggy sweatshirt and he's fucking ripped. <laughs> right? Oh my God. And the Asian dude just comes at it and throws a forearm to the face. Yeah. But not only that, then a gang of 20 other Asian kids start oh, jumping no. this yeah. white dude. Yeah. Dude, That's they, hella they funny. They start fucking him up that for a minute. That happened in Astro World. In Astro World. Okay. Yeah. Dude, that's such an anime moment. I know. Yeah. That's hella funny, <laughs> Let dude. Let me show you how I get super sane. <laughs> right? Like, he's like fucking with this dude that they think is a wimp and yeah. then takes off his shirt and he's ripped. Dude, yeah. Ripped. Because that yeah. happened to me. Somebody threw that drink. I took off my shirt. They're like, that makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> and they, they would just be shocked that this hey, fat guy beat the shit. It's all right. Much Jimbu had strength. Yeah. <laughs> hey, that's what I'm saying, dude. That's hella funny. I wonder oh if, it, if that's God. one of those moments like, this is the moment that I fucked up. Yeah. <laughs> it was at this moment. It was knew. that moment that he realized. Asian people fight back, dude, and we fight in fucking big ass yeah. numbers, dude. So, but, yeah. Other news about that, though. Um, Drake and um, Travis Scott, they're getting sued for $2 billion. Holy <gasps> shit. Wait, why Drake? Drake's a part of Astro World? He was, it was. He went up there and was performing while people were dying too. Oh Holy my shit, god! Man. Yeah, I mean it's kind of crazy too, right? Because um, obviously when we talked about Astroworld, we don't know too much about it, right? I just, I also, I in the podcast, I talked about how there was a certain point where there was a girl who was recounting what happened there, and long story short, with that, she said that she she. It was pandemonium. It was fucking nuts. Yeah. Like people were being squeezed so hard that they were. It was like a pimple. Like people were popping yeah. up because yeah. that's how yeah. hard they were being. Squeezing, yeah, like, uh, <laughs> squeezed. I, I forget what that thing is called when the crowd is moving and yeah. and you you are forcibly moved with that movement. Yeah. Um, but people, you know, talking about that sensation, say it's the strangest thing because you start to feel pressure. Mm -hmm. You can't move, and in some instances, their feet is off the ground. Yeah, but and then you they start, are uh, moving along. You yeah, know, and so. Um, this girl talked about how when she fell over, she saw somebody's face right under her. And yeah. She says, oh my God, these people are getting trampled. And then she says she saw another person under that person. How oh my God. fucking crazy is yeah. that, right? I yeah. mean, but look, man, this guy, Travis Scott, he's a fucking, he's garbage, man. Like if you see in in a, like one of his previous concerts too, like he's crowd surfing. I don't know if you guys addressed saw, this part. I saw this. Yeah. No, so, this. so he's crowd surfing and one of his fans tried to steal the shoes, right? Now, of course, that's that's an offense and he should be kicked out of the concert promptly, right? But this guy, Travis, grabs a mic. He spits on him and said, he starts yelling, fuck him up. 
fuck him. Like yeah. he's encouraging his fans to basically beat yeah. this guy. Get that guy. That yeah. guy right there. Get yeah, him. Get that guy. Get that. And he's like yelling, fuck him up. Fuck him up. Like he's chanting to himself. To get the crowd into it. Like, I'm sorry, bro. Like, you don't have enough money to get some right, new shoes. Exactly. Yeah. So, I mean, I think that kind of shows you what type of person this guy is. I don't know him personally, so I can't say. But, like, that, you know, I'm sure it's not the first time that that's happened in a crowd uh, surfing moment where somebody tried to steal something from the yeah. artist. But the reaction wasn't, fuck him up, you know? Yeah. And in this case with the Astro World, yeah, he just did not give a fuck of what was happening. And he's known to... He's been charged with inciting a riot yeah, before in the past. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, so See, this is all these details I didn't fucking yeah, know. Yeah, man. It's kind of crazy. And so he just went along with the concert like nothing's happening. I kind of did laugh though. People were a little upset because I was giggling a little bit about this part. What? About people are literally dying and this was doing the robot. Oh, I saw that video. Like, I was listen, like, when it comes to dropped. when it comes to like trauma and shit like yeah. this stuff, yeah. I, I can't help but laugh because that's the only thing I can do. <laughs> right. It's people are so dying ridiculous. and this guy's like, Bzz, yeah, it's bzz, so yeah. Like, ridiculous. You in can't the help video, but laugh. Like, the EMT is like doing yeah. CPR and yeah. then the camera shifts to Travis Scott and he's like, dur, dur, yeah, dur, yeah. Dur. That's what I'm saying. It's so ridiculous. You can't help but fucking laugh because it's just like, this is not real. This. That can't be happening, man. This is the future. You think in bro. defense, because uh, I guess, like, if I'm, you know, I, I'm always trying to think about the other side too. It's like, ah, it's kind of hard to say now, now that I know the 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 details, because there were clips of him saying like, everybody move out the way, but that's kind of after the fact no, of was, how much yeah. pandemonium. It was ensued. way after. Yeah, it was way after. And also too, it's like, well, you know, you see this crowd of people out there. How is he supposed to know? But it showed that he did know. And he didn't care. So, you know, when celebrities kind of go out and they, they, he put the, he's like, I'm, he does, puts out this public apology. Oh, that apology. fucking apology was garbage, first of all. I, I don't understand fucking why garbage. celebrities do public apologies when clearly it shows that they don't give a fuck. <laughs> like, come on. Take take a second. It's like, bro, come They're on. Like, listen, man. if Kyle Rittenhouse can cry, <laughs> you know, maybe I could, you know. Yeah. But I, yeah, I saw that. I'm like, this doesn't look good. Dude. No, it doesn't come across genuine at all. You know, it seemed like his lawyer trained him on what to say, and he was trying to fucking remember what to say while giving the <laughs> apology. Yeah, you know, and he's like, "Okay, I got to make sure I, I cover all the points and protect myself, yeah. so that I, you know, I'm not legally liable for." Because he, what, what is the stuff that he said that he was going to do? He was going to pay for the funeral costs for the people who died, and do something else with it too. It's like. I don't, I don't know, man. <laughs> I, I I watched maybe about like a minute into that apology, and I was like, "This is fucking garbage." I was like, "I'm not, I'm not gonna give him any more seconds." Damn, too much time. Because wait, this was also a Live Nation thing, right? So are they suing Travis Scott and Drake and not going after Live Nation? That I don't know. Yeah, I have no idea. Yeah, yeah, that's very interesting because I would think that they would go for Live Nation because it seems to be bigger. It, but it, I guess it's it's part of him and his control over this. Like, like I said, like, um. There were complaints about the lack of security to save on their costs, you know, so the, uh, those weak ass fences. But the organization was very poorly done. Yeah. That that's for sure. Something like this doesn't happen in a well organized concert. But he was known to just tell his fans, "Yeah, break in, get up front, yeah. <laughs> you know, like yeah. rush, yeah. bum rush." This yeah. You know what the weird thing is too, when I see that concert, um, there was like, <laughs> there were people who were trying to bash Travis Scott. I'm not I'm not on Travis Scott's side or anything. <laughs> people are like yeah you know me and my me and my uh seven-year-old almost died it's like i'm sorry worst parent on fucking earth <laughs> yeah. you brought your fucking seven-year-old to a fucking travis scott concert you piece of shit yeah. what the fuck are you yeah. doing Poor they're like judgment. my children were in danger they should not be at a travis scott concert what are you talking about yeah that's that's oh poor God. judgment but you know hey not everybody is a good parent. <laughs> yeah. my, and they were talking about my 14-year-old kid could have died. You let your 14-year-old child go to a, a Travis Scott concert unsupervised? What? Yeah. What is this? Like, what is going on? And they're trying to make write these posts as if they're dignified in this response. And like, you shouldn't have written that because it shows how shitty of a fucking parent you are too. Well, okay. With the, the teenager get going to the concert, maybe the parent didn't know. We could say that. Give them the benefit of the doubt. They didn't know who Travis Scott was. But the his parent name is taking, Travis Scott. <laughs> but taking your seven-year-old yourself, yeah. <laughs> that's clearly, uh, you, you kind of fucked up there, bro. <laughs> yeah. so my parent, I better know who the fuck concert that is. I'm like, whose concert is this? Justin Beaver's? All right, Justice Beaver you can go to. Justice Beaver. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you can go to Justice Beaver. Dude. <laughs> that's perfectly fine yeah. man 
with a name like that, he must be okay. <laughs> His first name's Justice. Um, <laughs> so in other news, um, this is very interesting. So we uh, just talked about in the previous podcast um, about the whole Kyle Rittenhouse thing in some positive news for a lot of people, um, Ahmaud Arbery. Um, everybody who was involved in the in the murder of Ahmaud Arbery, they're convicted. Thank God, man. Right? Thank and God. There's absolute, if this case specifically, if they walked away scratch-free, yeah. hell oh, would man. ensue. Oh, yeah. yeah. There's, I mean, because again, there was video evidence, right? This was really hard to watch, man. Imagine so, if there wasn't video evidence. Oh, yeah. We'd see the same right, shit. Right. Where was this located at? This podcast is brought to you by Skillshare, my friends. Every human was born to create. Whether you last picked up a paintbrush yesterday or in grade school, you can explore your creativity and be inspired. My friends, if you haven't known already, Skillshare is a longtime sponsor. And Skillshare is something that I use and I've told you many times before, I am still going over this course with MKBHD. That's Marcus Brownlee himself, YouTube success script, shoot and edit, because it's gonna help me brush up for next year when I start doing YouTube videos again. And it's always great to learn from people at the top of their game. Even though I've done it, I have so much more to learn. My friend Skillshare has an entire catalog of classes that now offer subtitles in Spanish, French, Portuguese, and Dutch as well, my friends. So fret not, you can always get the classes you need and the information the way you want to learn it and your time. And guess what, my friends? It's also incredibly affordable. An annual subscription is less than $10 a month. So explore your creativity at Skillshare.com slash brain and get a one month free trial of premium membership. That's one month of a premium membership at Skillshare.com slash brain. Oh, oh shit. Fuck. I don't know, man. I can't remember. Yeah. But, well, Atlanta, I, Atlanta. It was in yeah. Atlanta. So Ahmaud Arbery is jogging around in a neighborhood. Uh, these men uh, basically hunt him down like a fucking animal, dude. This that was super hard to watch, like in the back of a pickup truck chasing him down. Yeah. And he was he was jogging or was he just walking jogging. Down the street? Jogging. Yeah. He was yeah, working out. He's part jogging. of a sports team. Right. Yeah. And so he was um looking at a construction site, right? Dude, yeah. I do that all the time. <laughs> I do it all the fucking time. Like, what's being built here? <laughs> like, oh, I want to know. You're black, you, yeah. know, you know, if you're black, you're guilty of doing something. You like, know what I that mean? That blows my mind. And they're like, well, he was reaching for our shotgun. It's like, you chased him down with your with truck and you cornered him. Yeah. Yeah. Like, you were, cle you were clearly after him. This man was fearing for his life. Yeah. And he was doing whatever he can to try to protect himself. Dude, that video was hard to watch. Yeah, man. dude, because he got shot in the chest point blank with a fuck, with, by a shotgun, right? Yeah. Dude. This fucking white vigilantism, like, never, ever ends up good. Yeah, I and know. It's always some bullshit. I like, know. Can they not see that by now? Yeah. Because the, the thing that, what, what, what was, like, the, the dirty shit was... Those it was two men or three, 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 but they were connected to the sheriff of something like that, or he used to be a part of law enforcement or something as yeah. well. I think something the father like that, I used think, to be, an yeah, something, something like sure. that. I can't remember exactly what the connection was, but dude, the defense, and I, I just saw this because Ed told me to watch this clip. It's terrible <laughs> and fucking hilarious. Yeah. 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 The audacity. <laughs> the audacity to talk about Ahmad Arbery's fucking toenails as if that's a reason for why he was seen as a what criminal. What is the relevancy? What is the relevance of this guy's dirty toenails? Yeah, literally, if he, I'm I'm sure if that was part of the evidence they looked at, like, <laughs> they took off his socks in an autopsy, and oh my God, look, look at, at his guy. toenails. My Listen. God, he's a criminal. He's a criminal. He's black and he has dirty toenails. That's, that's essential. If, if it had to have any connection, she should have said the, autops the autopsy says this guy has some nasty ass toenails. Yeah. Like, and that proves he's a criminal. That's essentially what I can only take away from Bro, me. when I was watching the fucking closing argument, I was like, holy shit, I cannot believe what I'm hearing right now. This lady is trying to, first of all, tug at the heartstrings of, of the jury, you know? <laughs> <laughs> and then she goes into saying shit like this. I was like, bitch, are you fucking of sound mind? You know, you're a lawyer. She's I've never seen an innocent person with dirty ass toenails. I, I mean, it was also the fact that she mentioned his socks covering his dirty toenails. Yeah. Yo, yeah. why the fuck do we wear socks? Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> like, I'm sorry. Yeah. Was he supposed to be sockless? Yeah, and have absolutely impeccable toenails. Where I grew up, 
everybody had nice <laughs> toenails. And in fact, in Deuteronomy, <laughs> <laughs> thou shalt not have unpedicure fight. And if you do, that's the yeah. foot of a sinner, which means clearly he was out there robbing the whites. <laughs> Crazy, He was dude. sentenced yeah. to be stoned in the first place. Hilarious. Oh what, the, what is going on? Like, that's just the funniest thing I've ever seen in my life. Yeah. And what did she think that she was? I bet you when she wrote that shit out, she's like, "This is gonna get them." Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You know, you know the thing is, I actually didn't watch the prosecution's closing arguments because I saw that and I yeah. was like, "It was like, there's no way." This is, this is, I'm like, "Come on, this if, if if this guy does ends up in not guilty, oh my lord, dude, it would have been the most insane fucking thing ever, dude." I I, I just can't help but laugh. Yeah. That yeah. is hilarious. Again, another one of those things where it's so ridiculous that you can't help but laugh. You're just so appalled and you're just like so dumbfounded. Like, are those really the words that are coming out of your mouth right now? If I was there and yeah. I was those three guys that were being prosecuted, I just, what the fuck <laughs> yeah. are you doing? That's That 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 was their expression, actually. If When you see that closing argument and the camera is showing those guys, they look concerned, you Man. know? Like, oh boy. Can oh I just boy. tell y'all something from multiple people's accounts? I heard that Ahmaud Arbery farted a lot. Yeah. <laughs> oh and what my kind God. of good man farts <laughs> and looks at construction sites? Yeah, man. He's a serial farter, everybody. Yeah. <laughs> like, but, he's a like fucking clown, dude. I'm, I'm glad justice was served in that case as well, you know, because, yeah, the dude was straight murdered. You know what I mean? Like, in cold blood, man. Like, that. Like you said, he got hunted down like an animal. Yeah. You know, like he was some sort of fucking game. It looked very, it like replace those cars with horses and whips. And that's what it looked like to me. It looked ridiculous. Yeah. I, I couldn't believe what I was fucking seeing. Yeah. And they were doing that in in guise of justice. Like, yeah, they thought it was their right to, to you know, make a citizen's arrest. That it was their God-given duty to, to do that. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. It's the entitlement I've been seeing a lot that I grew up with. I mean, it's... It hits a sore spot for me because I grew up in the fucking sticks yeah. right, of people right. like that who won't necessarily like you for being some anywhere at any place, anytime. And they'll see you and feel like they have the right, which they do, I guess. But then they just come up to you and they just start talking shit to you. Like what? And I'm just sitting there like, what did I do to you? Well, <laughs> like, well, why are you having such a bad day? Because you're in, 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 your, in their eyes you along with other minorities are subhuman yeah you're not on their level of humanity you know yeah. no i mean like the the kind of shit i'd go through over boom shit of, of of some guy trying to make justice out of some foreigner doing something weird right yeah like i was driving down a street and it was a school zone and apparently i was going too fast well I literally wasn't paying attention. I was just headed to the weed store. Well, this fucking guy followed me all the way to the weed store and he comes out there and then he goes, do you know how fast you're going? And I'm like, wait, are you cops? And it's like, clearly not. You're driving this beat up pickup truck. And I'm like, um, I don't know. I don't know. And he's like, you know, if you drive that fast, the cops will come here and beat your ass. And I'm like, I, I was speechless. Yeah. For a moment, like after he left, yeah. I was like, I should have fucked him up. You know, like, <laughs> like I was literally like, wait, who the fuck was he? Like, yeah. was he the cops? What the fuck? Yeah. Like that, that. Like what gives you the right? Yeah. The Pyongyang Batman shit I keep talking about. Yeah. These people who yeah. feel like they, they're being an upright citizen. He's going to go home to his dinner table. I told some Asian guy off Well, today. yeah, because they, but, but literally it's this idea of like. I'm a true American, so I need to teach this foreigner what it's like to live in this yeah, country. This chink. Yeah, they, they, that's what I'm saying. And we have this conversation multiple times about a lot of people don't understand what it's like to be in this country and still feel like you don't belong, even though you're just as American as a person who doesn't look like you. Yeah. And that's what that is. It's that level of entitlement of he's trying to teach you how to be a real person in this country. It's like, what gives you the right? Dude, what I, are you talking about, guy? I can't tell you how many times people have told me to go back to my own country. And I'm like, I was born here. What yeah. do they say? Bullshit. <laughs> 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 
Oh no. shit, you don't even speak English. Yeah. I'm speaking English to you right now. Yeah, but you got an accent. Yeah. You got an accent. Yeah. I'm speaking yeah. English. Dude, I've gotten that too. I got in the face of some fucking Pyongshin motherfucker starting shit with me in my store, like harassing this breast cancer survivor. She has fucking tubes and she has a fucking oxygen tank. This motherfucker's giving her shit. And then I'm like, yo, you can't do that. You're gonna get the fuck out of here. Yeah. And then his he dropped his shit on the floor. Like, it was technically my shit. He didn't pay for it. Right. You know, he just threw it on the ground. And then I just got out of counter, got in his face. I'm like, what the fuck is wrong with you? You need to apologize to her right fucking now. What the fuck is the matter with you? And he goes, <laughs> first, he says, oh, wow. You don't have an accent. <laughs> oh my God. And he was like, you speak pretty good English. And I said, fuck you, motherfucker. <laughs> yeah. Is that like, what good the English? Fuck? Yeah. He's like, you don't know fucking shit about me or whatever. And he's like, oh man, your dad would be proud of you. Oh, that's right. He's dead. Oh, Jeez, and he man. went personal. And I was like, yeah. like, if I fuck him up right now, my mom will lose this store. Yeah. You yeah. Know? Yeah. And I was like, just get out. Get the yeah. fuck out of here, you know? And then this poor lady is scared to death. And I, and I was like, I'm sorry, ma'am. And then, you know, I escorted her out and took her to her car. And this guy was still sticking around. And he's done. And I was like, get the fuck out of her before I fuck you up. And he's like, hit me, bro. I'll sue you for everything you got. That store's going to be mine. And I was like, that's why you're a fucking coward. Yeah. You fucking bitch. Yeah. Look at you, you little fucking fat fuck. <laughs> you fat fucking slabby piece of shit motherfucker scaring old one. Does that make you feel like a fuck? I, I couldn't stop talking shit. Yeah. I just kept going. Yeah. And then he was like, yeah, that's right. You're a coward. You're a coward. And he walked away on his fucking bike. That's oh, hilarious. He rode, he rode a bicycle there. Yeah. And so I was just like, what the fuck? This motherfucker. So. I went back through my video camera to see what happened. Obviously, I didn't get any, any audio, mm -hmm. but I put his picture up <laughs> like yeah. on our screen and I just put it on there, you know, and people just keep asking, who is this guy? You know, what, what happened? Mm. You know, and I tell him exactly what happened. I say, like, if you know who this guy is, he's a piece of shit. Yeah, he's That's all I want back. you to know. I'm putting this up here because he's a piece of shit. Yeah. yeah. That's it. Right. And, and then one guy comes in, right? And then he goes, oh, God. That's my son. What did he do? Oh my <laughs> god, yeah. dude! Damn. Hilarious. I told him. I told him what was. I told him everything. Yeah. And I was like, and he mentioned my dad. Yeah. My dead dad. Yeah. And I was like, I would never have said anything about his father. And I don't even fucking know him. And yeah. It's you. Yeah. I didn't say shit. You know. And then and then he was like, I'm so he was embarrassed. Yeah. I'm so I'm so sorry. I'm sorry. And then he left like a five dollar bill and left, but he didn't buy anything. This makes you yeah. feel better. Yeah. But that's what I'm saying. Like, I had to I like wherever the fuck they think they're doing, they think they're the good guys. Right. I swear to God. Right. Like, no, for sure. For sure they do. They yeah. don't think they're in the wrong when they're doing this I'm shit. I'm saying, like, they're sitting there. And I'm betting even for these people, like, I don't personally know, I'm making assumptions right now, but I bet you in their mind, they're like, what did I do wrong? Like I'm in the right. I'm the I'm the just one, and I'm sitting here being prosecuted. Yeah. I feel like they can't even wrap their head around what mistake that yeah. they made, or even mistake or judgment call. Whatever I thought this fuck. was America. Yeah, <laughs> he's black. Don't you see that? I'm white. Why are you treating me like a black man? <laughs> that, that'd be so funny. That's that is exactly no, right. So, so after the the fucking January six uh, riots, that mm -hmm. insurrection. Yeah. A bunch of people were trying to get on planes to go back home and the, the fucking secret service and like these the police caught them, right? Mm. One guy is he's being arrested and he's like, What'd I do? What'd I do? Why are you treating me like a black man? <laughs> and they're like, That's it. <laughs> there that's it is. It. Now there you it get is. it. Now yeah, you get it. Get so it. when people say that too, like, okay, that's a literal account of it, right? And they're acting as if racism in this country doesn't exist. Now, here's the thing. Has it gotten better? Of course, right? I think as time has shown, we can't say that it hasn't gotten better in terms of metrics, right? Like we yeah. can talk, like there's no slavery anymore, and there's no like real public, like actual lynching on a fucking yeah, tree. Okay. Yeah, we can say that, yeah. but we can also say that there's still a lot of room for improvement, and there's still heavy remnants of racism still here, even though it's not written in law. The people who still believe it, they still enact upon their racism, and it's it's institutional. Oh, it's deep rooted, deep rooted yeah. in so, American history. That's the problem, though. 
So white people don't know the difference of what you were just saying, Yeah, right? They think racism is slavery. They think racism is open lynching. They don't think like what the fuck is happening today is racism. Okay, let's be fair. Some white people. Some white people. Some Sorry, white I had people. to go through therapy for my generalization <laughs> for white people. No, I mean, yeah. you've clearly been through yeah. a lot of shit and the restraint you showed in some of these situations, hey, props to you, man, because I think <laughs> I would have fucking murked somebody for sure, for yeah. damn sure, man. If they're coming at me like that, it's like, all right, man, I'm going to jail today, yeah. dude. I've made up my mind, man. But, yeah, if yeah. somebody talked about my dead dad, I think I'd probably find where he lived and I'd fucking slit his <laughs> yeah. fucking throat. Yeah. I would start plotting. I would start plotting, man. Yeah. But that motherfucker does, didn't, never came by your store again. But um, my friend owned this store down the street and then I saw him there and I was visiting him that day and he got the fuck out real quick. So it's like, oh, at the end of the day, you're fucking embarrassed. Yeah. You are a coward. You don't even like looking at me, you bitch. Mm. I, wonder if he, I wonder if his dad spanked him. Oh, no. I probably, uh, I, 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 I probably, I'm pretty sure his dad beat his I, ass. I, I yeah. probably would guess that he got a whipping with his belt. Yeah. Yeah. He probably took that belt off. Because I'm going to beat you like you're a black man. <laughs> 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 his dad's racist, too. <laughs> oh, man. For sure. His dad shit. went in on him. Yeah. 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 I, I give it to, the, like, here's the thing. Like, there are, like, hardworking men that just have to do what the fuck they have to do to survive, right? Um, the the fucking people who work lumber, you know, and dude, I I made friends with some of these neighborhood kids, and they just grew up there in that area, and that's what they do. They cut down timber, you yeah. know. And one guy fell fifty fucking feet off of a tree, broke his legs, you know, in his back, and like a few months later, I saw him rolling in on a wheelchair, happy as fuck, you know, he's alive, kind of thing. Damn, they're and he went back to where he's still working timber, you know. And uh, the regular police officers that came through that just live in the area and whatever. Like, we all respected each other. The problem I literally had were with, I don't know if I want to call them disenfranchised. But <laughs> the disenfranchised <laughs> whites. Just, maybe yeah, the down on the luck whites. Yeah. Who looked at me and straight up, I'm behind the counter and they're like, look at you, you loser. Yeah. What do you make? Minimum wage? You can't get a better job than this, you fucking loser. And, and they, I'm like, and they walk what off. did I do to you, <laughs> yeah. bro? Well, you know, it's true though. Like, you know, hurt people always want other people to hurt. You yeah. know, I think that the the hard part is, is that we're always taught to like give empathy to people, but empathy runs out real fast, especially when you kind of overstep your boundaries like yeah. that. It's like having the, even like in personal relationships, like, I can only go so far as to say like, oh, this person has treated me like shit or has done something bad to me because of their past life. That still has a limit. It doesn't mean that I'm not going to slap the fucking shit out of you if you do something bad to me, mm -hmm. right? It doesn't excuse you from it, right? It's just empathy can only go so far sometimes. It's very hard because I try to be as empathetic as possible. But yeah. now I just tend to just cut people out of my life. It's like, oh, you're not a good person and I'm going to cut you out. And it makes me feel better now. Yeah. But obviously yeah. in your situation, you can't just cut these people out. I can't. Or, just, yeah. Or yeah. And in, in, in your case, that's that was your everyday yeah. so scenario. But <laughs> but to your point of like cutting certain people out, it doesn't even have to go as far as a judgment of you're not a good person. It's just I don't want to be around this. I don't want to be around mm. you know what you say and what you do. So I don't need to be a part yeah. of you. You know, you don't need to be a part of my life anymore. <laughs> to speak on that, man, you know that I have that video series of that guy who always throws his <laughs> money at me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah right. Yeah. <laughs> and I, I had it one day, and I complained. Yeah, him. I was like, oh my, I'm gonna blow up at this fucking guy. Yeah, you know? it's like drives me crazy. Yeah, yeah. You know, and she was like, think about it. He comes here every day and buys a 12 pack. How much does a 12 pack cost? How many times a day does he come here? You know, it's like do the math. Yeah, and I was like, "All right." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, he clearly likes you. Uh, likes us enough to buy beer from yeah. us. So it's like, don't put them away. Then that's that's then we lose that business. Like, yeah, that right. and that's I had to swallow that's that. The hard part, exactly. That's the word, man. You got to swallow that because it's your business yeah. and your livelihood depends on it. So you have to take that type of behavior and that type of I. You know, maybe you won't say it's as far as like it's he's a racist. But prejudice, you know, I, I I could say you know amongst everybody, like yeah. because there's it's it's so hard to now like um, very pinpoint. You want to say something is racist, but it's not. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I would say an implicit bias. Yeah, just this yeah, bias exactly. that they they don't know that they've been indoctrinated, that they don't know they grew up into, 
that they don't realize that is in them. So nobody wants to say, yes, I have racist tendencies. Yeah. Nobody wants to say that. Yeah. I can be a little racist. I acknowledge that because I also believe everyone, everyone can be a little racist. Yeah. You know? But white people, racist is the N word to them. Mm. That's what I realized. If you call a white person racist, what? That is not who I am. <laughs> like, yeah. of course, right? If you would only open your eyes, China. Yeah. <laughs> you would see that clearly I'm not racist. Out. There's you so much more to me. Yeah. Yeah. And like, that's not even how my eyes look like, bro. Yeah. Yeah. I got bigger eyes than you, man. Yeah. No, but for real, like, they just, they just don't want to be called a racist. And if I say racist, like, they, like, white people really really they get so incensed like they don't want to be called that at all yeah and i think it goes to your point of saying it's like their version of what racism is is them not killing you yeah you know and yeah. that's that's like you know for these certain type of white people it's like listen i'm not over here fucking burning the cross on your lawn chink it's, yeah. it's like but <laughs> yo a guy i i went to high school with and this was like on Facebook where he was talking some shit on some BLM stuff, right? Or on white privilege. Mm -hmm. And I was like, bro, I went to high school with you. you. We've had many classes. You know how I was treated because this motherfucker called me Kenny Wu from Mighty Ducks. Jesus, <laughs> oh, no. Right? And yeah. I was like, you know, you did, weren't treated the way I was yeah. because you're white. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And I was like, and on the other side, I still experience this to this day. People act like you in high school, but they're grown ass people and they still behave this way to me. No, you know? for sure. You for want to sure. tell me there's no white privilege? Absolutely. You know what he says? He says, you should be thankful that you have a business out here. That's crazy. I'm like, so that's not racist? Yeah. <laughs> exactly. You're, pri you're privileged. Dude. Me allowing you to live your privilege, me allowing you to just exist the way you are is a privilege. Right. Like, because you, chink, yeah. <laughs> are subhuman. Like, also, too, it's like, you allow me? Who are you? Yeah, yeah. who are you? Yeah. You piece of shit. Why do you allow me? But that's the thing. That's that's what he's alluding to with the whole elitist mindset, you know, just this kind of like. It's the white American privilege. Yeah, dude. man. And and look, I've said this before too. The most amount of racism that I faced in my life were from white people, you know? Yeah. And and I'm not going to lie. There was a period, uh, especially when I was younger, like my elementary days, I despised white people because of it. But then once I met other white people who weren't like that, it was a learning experience for me. Like, oh, okay. No, so I, I've told this when I first came on this podcast, of how I had to go to therapy because of my major generalization of white people. And I was, I saw it in myself. I said it out loud to myself. Oh shit, I'm being racist towards white people. Because mm -hmm. yeah. when I see a bald white man with a goatee, I am fucking triggered <laughs> instantly. Like, I hate yeah. Stone Cold Steve you know? Austin. Yeah. <laughs> I, I love him, right? Yeah. I would never want to meet him yeah. for some reason. You know, I got this weird trigger to me. But Anybody like, with knee braces freaking you know, me out, dude. But no, I, I, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what he hears every time he sees a white man walking towards oh, him. Oh yeah, a dude. Bald white man yeah. I always, goatee. I always get on my toes when I see him. Like I always feel like, oh shit. Like if I see a middle-aged white guy, yeah. I get on my toes. Yeah. So I had to go through therapy for that shit, you know, to that's be the, like, you, not man. everyone is the enemy. So that's why I hang out with Dan so much, right? <laughs> I mean, he's so Korean. He's but kind like, of the, the equalizer. <laughs> yeah. Dan looks white as fuck. Though. Yeah. yeah. No, my therapist was like, you, you have to meet good white people. Not for sure. And, but she was like, I know that's hard to come by. Yeah. yeah. It's like, have you? In your, in your <laughs> Thanks area. Thanks for acknowledging that. Yeah. yeah in your area. In my right? area. Mark Zuckerberg, yeah. he speaks Mandarin. Yeah. <laughs> No, I, the I, worst I, Mandarin I've ever heard in my life. Well, speaking of Mandarin, it was segue into that. Uh, Wait, what the fuck were you talking about uh, that? What was that? Yeah, so about China. So uh -huh. uh, this renowned tennis player, tennis champion, um, that's not only known in the Chinese community, but in the tennis community, right? Because she's a, a, ch a tennis champion. Uh, Peng Shui is her name. Now, she came out and um, made allegations about a Chinese government official uh, about sexual abuse. Uh oh. That she was sexually mm. abused by this person. And, you know, they used their power against her. And now she's dead. Oh, no. 
she had, she, disappeared. She, yeah, she got disappeared <laughs> real quick by the CCP. Oh, she fucking, they Jack Motter ass. Yeah, yeah, they Jack Motter ass. Not only made her disappear physically, any search result for her name came up in zero in the Chinese <gasps> search engine. Like she didn't exist. Yeah, they made her disappear, bro. And then other international communities, the tennis community started catching wind of like, where is she? She's been missing, right? Mm. And after about two weeks of being missing, it, it like that issue started coming to the forefront of like the news and stuff. And it was like trending on Twitter, whatever, right? And then it's like, well, clearly it's the motherfucking CCP, you know, that- Damn. They, they have a history of yeah. doing this shit. And you attack a government official in the Chinese Communist Party, some shits, it doesn't matter who you are. Yeah. Jack Ma is the living proof of that. Now, here's the fucking kicker. The foreign ministry was asked about this in some, I forget what the, the situation was, but he was asked about this because, you know, the news was there. And his response pretty much, I mean, it's his, it's his I'm, I'm a, you know, kind of paraphrasing here, but he was just kind of like, um, I wasn't aware of this person's disappearance. And even so, this is none of your business. <laughs> oh my God. This is, not, this is not a foreign issue. I was like, technically you're right. It's not, it's not a foreign issue. But that's and crazy. I got to respect the gangster, bro. I was like, damn. God this damn. One, this cool. just, so basically they're like, what happened to it? None of your business. Yeah. 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 Hey, you come not, in here, do I come into your house and take a poop yeah, on your floor? Yeah. This is not a foreign matter. You know, I was like, God damn. Now here's the thing. She showed up. Um, I think about three days ago, four days ago, after being missing for about like over two weeks. But you know how she showed up? State controlled media put out videos and pictures of her living a normal life. How fucking creepy is that, dude? Well, the damn, that's, and that was because the WTP, the World Tennis. They were willing to pull out yeah. of China. Uh, they, they made a statement saying that if she's not accounted for and, and, and is safe and sound, then we're willing to lose our business in China, which is worth like, I think, billions. yeah, billions probably, three yeah. billion worth. But I, you know. I would even go as far as like, well, she needs to be, I, we need to see her physically. Yeah, well, yeah, that's what they said. Yeah. And then so they materialized yeah. video and pictures. Was that enough for them though? Were they like. No, of course like, not. No, absolutely no. not. Yeah, everybody's like, yo, this is not fucking, you know, this is clearly under the control of, yeah. of state media. Where Where is her personal accounts, right? Yeah. Like where, why can't she speak for herself? Why can't she come out? But hey, we gave you enough. <laughs> oh, <laughs> like, yeah. cool. well, we're out there. Yeah. Okay. So it's it just like it just shows you, man, like how fucking dangerous and brazen and like crazy the Chinese Communist Party is. So did the NBA make the right move? Well, <laughs> here's the thing. well, that's that's the criticism on LeBron, right? Yeah. Is that he doesn't have the balls to speak out against all these things going on in China. I, I would then argue that um you know one person and the entire state of hong kong is different <laughs> right yeah yeah like um at that point i'm pretty sure uh the chinese government would want hong kong over the nba mm. it's like we'll just copy and make our own nba yeah. you know yeah yeah well shit speaking of hong kong too man i mean if i feel like the invasion of Taiwan is imminent too. Oh, you know God. what I mean? Damn, you really think that's going to happen? Oh, I think it's just a matter of time. But here's the thing. Even with the Hong Kong situation, there was a lot of bold talk from other countries. Right. What right. happened though, ultimately? Nothing. Exactly. So the communist, Chinese Communist Party knows y'all motherfuckers want to talk shit, but nobody's going to actually do shit. So we're going to keep doing our shit. And who's going to stop us? Yeah. You know what I mean? And this was a long game that they planned. People think warfare is just about guns and military. Nah, digital warfare, economic warfare. This has been a long game for them. They've been doing this shit for 25 years against not only us, but anybody who might be an adversary to them. I just pictured you disappearing right now. <laughs> <laughs> they somehow got to you. Well, thank God I live in America, you know? <laughs> but, you know all of their strategies, bro. Yeah, yeah, you no, know but, too but, much. But yeah, I mean, that's the thing. This is, this is not a really a mystery if you look yeah. into it. They, isn't, isn't it so funny, though, when uh, people who live in America, right, which despite all of the stuff that happens here, it's a pretty fucking good country to live oh, in. Oh, yeah, yeah, right? absolutely. In comparison to what's absolutely. going on outside, right? Absolutely. Yeah. And there's people in, in the country right now that are hyper for communism. 
Oh, they don't it's, know. And there's a lot of young people. Yeah, they the, don't know what the fuck the, they're talking the, about. The That's Rittenhouse uh, protests, right? They were chanting uh, some pro communist chants. Um, like, I forgot the exact words, but it was just nonsense. Like, you know, yeah, pure nonsense. You know what that is? Too privileged. Yeah. That's what that is. Dude, there's people like people who have really literally escaped communism going, What the fuck are you talking about? Yeah. You haven't yeah. lived under communism. Yeah. You know what the fuck you're saying? Yeah. It's just, I, I don't know, man. It, it, it's, that's fucking crazy. Yeah. So, you know, like, I, I, <laughs> this one pixelated picture of her. See, she's okay. <laughs> don't you see right now? It's like, dude, she looks like Princess Peach from Mario in the 1990s, yeah. dude. You no, know, like, the video was like of, with her eating with other people and stuff like that. I mean, but it's so just creepy, man, because you know this shit is completely like directed. Okay. Now yeah. you sit here. You pretend and like they you're zoom eating in, and there's a gun next to her stomach. Yeah, exactly. Now smile. <laughs> I said smile. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know? That's, That's the sure. worst thing I've yeah, ever heard. Yeah, in my so life. um it, nobody bought this picture and video evidence of her actually being okay and, and being safe and sound. So I, I don't really know what's next now. I, I think the government is gonna be like, eh, we gave you enough. We even did this much. We didn't even have to do this much, but we did. So I, I and I've heard a couple of people who talked about um, how China wasn't like this before in the last like 10 years, but it's been happening a lot recently. So it, you see a lot of these like YouTubers who are they're white and they lived in China, but they don't live there. They live in the States now yeah. and they do like all these they kind of um, do these language channels where they can speak Chinese. Yeah. And you hear them. And um, I forgot who told me the story, but there was somebody that they met that um, essentially spoke Chinese. It was a white person. Mm -hmm. And um, he was talking about how much he loved Chinese culture or whatever. And he goes, oh, do you still live there now? And he was saying that, no, he doesn't. He goes, why? He goes, because the country's different now. It wasn't It wasn't like the way it is before. It's super controlled. Like, you don't know what's going to happen. He said that um, he got almost cornered and robbed multiple times. And he said it wasn't like that in the first five years he lived there. So that's why he moved back to the States. He says, like, with government control, yeah. like, they they like him trying to create content, all this stuff yeah. is super scrutinized. And yeah. he's like, I, I can't live there anymore. So he decided to move back five years ago. No, I think yeah. I think there was always, I mean, because look, Tenement Square, right? That's a prime example. You know, I'm talking about him as a foreigner living in China. Oh, okay, okay, so, okay. It, it, I thought you were just talking about like the the kind of the no, oppression we're not, of not, the not, communist not macro. party. We're talking about micro and his personal experience. Uh, uh, so he said like, it's just, even for me as a foreigner who's trying to experience life there, mm -hmm. like that communist rule scares him. He goes, I it wasn't like that before. Mm, yeah. And it's, you know, it's obviously with these stories, it's getting worse and worse. Yeah. So we don't know what's going on. Well, yeah, I mean, but the thing is, the crazy thing is that fucking CCP just acts like freedom of speech doesn't exist. <laughs> you know, no. maybe not for there, right? Oh, but yeah. they act like that's the reality. It's like, nah, bro, everybody else it's, is talking about it freely, man. They know what's going I, on. I think it's a major philosophical difference. Like you can't just say anything. It's yeah. like a yeah. different thing. Yeah. 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 Dude, fucking Jack Ma disappearing is crazy. Yeah. Right? If they can do that, anybody. Right. I haven't heard anybody can. shit from Jack Ma. Well, he now. did reappear. He did reappear. Um, but in a weird way. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, he's not so public anymore, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah exactly. I'm okay, guys. Yeah. <laughs> I swear. <laughs> it just shows you like it, no matter how wealthy, how powerful you think you are, if you're not part of the government. <laughs> yeah, they made Jack Chan turn on his son. You yeah. know? <laughs> with, with the whole weed thing, right? Yeah. He's like, he deserves it. Like, holy shit. A whole shit. bunch of shit. Yeah. Like, like yeah. They'll, they'll tank, you know, foreign movies because you criticize this and that or whatever. But like, Jackie Chan, I think, is known to be like a China sympathizer. Yeah. And, and like, that's why some Hong Kongese people like really, see him as a traitor. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Really don't like him. But... Yeah, like the invasion of Taiwan, I feel like is gonna happen, oh, and no. but that's what scares me too. I mean, Biden said that he assists Taiwan, right? They say, they say, they say. We'll see when shit really hits the fan. You know that Taiwan has been prepping military, you know, doing military exercises, getting ready for this shit. China's continually testing their shit, but I, mean, I don't. They don't stand a chance. Yeah, they don't stand a, don't stand a fucking chance, man. Unless the milit like the U.S. military gets involved in a meaningful way, like we're gonna stand at your side no matter what type shit, ride or die, they're oh, they're doomed. No. <laughs> yeah. they're do but think about that: if the U.S. steps in like that, that's not good news for anybody, man. For anybody, yeah. 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 U.S. versus China going at it is not good for anybody. Yeah. yeah, just keep it a cold war, man. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. But yeah, man, they're wiling out over there, bro. I love Taiwan, man. 
that place, they, 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 Taiwanese people actually love Japan because of the yeah. infrastructure that they set up over there, mm. which is kind of crazy. Very different from Korean people. Right. <laughs> like, yeah, they're, yeah. they're like fuck well, we Japanese got shit. Different history fuck there. Japanese shit. Yeah, yeah. we kind of got different history there, bro. Yeah. <laughs> well, guys, uh, that wraps up this episode of the Genius Brain Podcast. Uh, Genius Brains every Thursdays and Sundays until next year, January first. We're gonna go to once a week. You can catch Ed at Ed Park VP, and you can catch the other Ed at Ed Two Secret Society. S O S C R T S O C I T E. Societies. S O C I E T Y. Dot com. Yes, sir. You guys can catch the new Back to Basics drop. We haven't done a drop in a while because of COVID, but this fucking new line is oh, it's fire. fire, bro. And, and people are loving it too. Yeah, we're know? loving it, man. Loving it, loving it, loving it. So cop some gear while you still can. A lot of stuff is going out super quick. We still got some of our stock from the previous lines. Uh, we need to move that out. It's on super discount. Uh, we will see you all next time. Peace. Peace. Peace.